scholars and students assalamu alaikum and a happy teachers day to all we have got assembled here to realize the twofold objectives of celebrating the teachers day commemorating the birth anniversary of sarvapalli dr radha krishnan and reflecting on the crucial role that teachers do play in the maintenance and sustenance of the social fabric of the community undoubtedly they are the most responsible members of the society because their professional efforts affect the fate of the earth the the orientation of societal consciousness is about having transformation reconstruction of societal goals towards lasting human values the growing materialistic attitude is threatening the very fabric of our society there is a great progress in intellectual and scientific skill but the ethical and spiritual sphere is shrinking the foundation of any society realize relies not on the material and technological progress but on the core human values of honesty loyalty ethics peace brotherhood compassion and love teachers being the torch bearers have enormous responsibility in molding the societal consciousness and reshaping the future based on peace harmony and justice it is imperative that teachers must cultivate the altruistic values among individuals to contribute for the well-being of society as a whole teachers can play an important role in infusing the knowledge of human values through societal consciousness we must remember if we lose our human values by having everything mechanized then only machines will dictate our lives this way the society will soon cease to nurture us and that would be our last tragedy i on behalf of department of education university of kashmir welcome you all to this national seminar with the theme teachers reorienting the societal consciousness towards human values as we have gathered over here to celebrate teachers day so let us have a view on the role of teachers and the importance of teachers teachers day is an occasion as we all know that this occasion is celebrated as uh, the or we can say that if we have to commemorate the birth anniversary of dr radha krishnan the second president of this uh, country and who have been uh, very uh, fortunate enough to have such a great leader as the president of this country that he has been an educationist he has been a researcher it's why that he has given more importance to teachers than that of his, the celebrating of his birthday so on the request of the students once he was asked once he was requested to celebrate the birthday of the radha dr radha krishnan as the president of india the, then he expressed his wish and desire to celebrate this as the teachers day for to give a tribute to the entire teaching fraternity teachers day is an occasion and opportunity to pay tribute and gratitude to teachers for their continuous selfless and precious efforts in shaping the future they are the reason to enrich all the quality education system in the country and process it continuously students need inspiration and motivation which they surely get from their teachers which is really depicted or here as we have been all the students of our rebel teachers they prepare them to tackle any adversities in life through knowledge and patience teachers take the lead in molding them into worthy in molding them into worthy place 
to face the world boldly. As we all know that it is impossible to define teacher, as teachers are not only limited to teaching or guiding students in academics, but also helping students to make better choices. They add value to their character and make them ideal citizens of the country. As the common age goes, the future of a country lies in the hands of its children. And teachers, as mentors, can mold students into future leaders who shape the destiny of the country. They play an important role in student lives, helping them become successful in their later adjustment. They help them to become good humans, better members of society and ideal citizens of the country. Teachers Day is celebrated to acknowledge the challenges, hardships, and special roles and teacher, that teachers play in our lives. As all of you know that we have been, the Department of Education has always been active in organizing such programs from time to time on some pressing issues like that of the drug addiction and its impact on education and in general, and we can say on mental health in particular. Women education, or we can say the gender equities, the problems of educational system with regard to teacher education program, teacher education system. These are the problems. Um, time and again, the program, this department is organizing such programs to address the problems of society. Ustad hu mujhe us pe malal thodi hai, mulk ka mustakbil samarna aasan thodi hai. बस उस्ताद ही फिक्रमंद है सबके उरूज के लिए यहाँ किसी को किसी का ख्याल थोड़ी है मजा तो तब है किसी खाब के जरे को मुनवर कर दे मिटाना पड़ता है खुद को कौम की तरक्की के लिए ये काम कोई मामूली काम थोड़ी है ये काम कोई मामूली काम थोड़ी है I feel pleasure that every year Department of Education is celebrating Teachers Day with seminar. This is uh, their uh, routine activity on Teachers Day. But at the same time, when I uh, see myself as teacher and then as student, uh, there is huge difference. There are some uh, issues that I always face as person. When I consider myself as a teacher, and there is a lot of responsibility, look towards the responsibility that what I inculcate to my students, that's a big question. Honestly speaking, when I see myself as a teacher, especially in the present scenario, the responsibility of the teacher in present technological environment, technological world, how much what you call hard work a teacher has to do to be a good teacher. Because generally we uh, see that observational learning has played the much role so far as the highest seat of learning that is basically in universities are concerned. Generally, so far as the curriculum is concerned or the, our syllabi is concerned, I always tell this in my lecture that you are better, you know better these things. But here at university level, it is only basically the experience and application of that knowledge that matters, not basically what you teach. You can, you can learn these things by your own way, but the only thing is that how you are able to use it in a practical sense, using your experience through, towards the world or towards your life. That is basically the main concern of a teacher to be taken into consideration while we talk about Teacher's Day, that how much honest, how much competent I am with these things to inculcate something to the community at this juncture. We see, we talk about human values, and we forget ourselves that while we stand in the society. 
what is our role in the society as teacher and where as individual I stand in that context. We talk about a lot of issues in the society and talking just not being part of this is basically the gap that we are finding as a teacher. We are part of the society, we ignore that. We say this is the society of some others. We, a little bit, we consider ourselves that this will not affect us. But finally we see our children, our surroundings get affected and that automatically have effect on our own life. So that is the main issue that I think that teachers should consider. I, I, I told you here as teacher, I'm talking about as teacher, what is the responsibility of the teacher. Basically, I'm a student of sociology and uh, in our books it is written that there are certain agencies of socialization and at the top we keep the family. That the family is the first agency of socialization. Probably the books were written, very old books and the writers were also, I think we should write now the books in sociology and education also. We should now keep the schools and formal education as a first agency of socialization. Because when, when we see that earlier we used to send this child of six years to the school and probably that was the reason when it was considered as the first agency of socialization. Now we send our wards and children at the age of one or two to the practice or we send them to the pre-nursery schools and probably it has now taken a preeminence for the first agency of socialization. So the focus of developing the what we see that the society at present lies on the shoulders of a teacher. And the second we see that uh, when we talk about the equality, that we see that the what Taslima already talked about the gender equality, we see that the colleges, schools and pre-nursery schools were opened with this uh, condition or with this want to that there will be gender equity, there will be uh, access to the premises, to the schools, to the colleges and to the higher education institutions, so we see that it is the equity part which has been promoted by the by a teacher. Simultaneously we see that there is a there is a great program we see we say that education is the best leveler of inequalities. I on behalf of the University of Kashmir on my own behalf congratulate the Department of Education for holding this today's one day national seminar on the Teacher's Day. He would din ki khidmati ustad ke was. He would din bhi ki khidmati ustad ke was dil chahata tha hadiyat dil pish ko. Thank you. The teachers, their contributions. If we see our predecessors or those primitive societies, what was the role of teacher? He was considered or his word was considered the word of the Bible. So naturally they used to get that quantum or that level of respect also. But these were olden days. Even our forefathers might not have lived in that society when teacher's word used to be the final, or rather word of Bible. Then came the era of writing the books. Academicians, intellectuals, they started noting down or pen down their ideas, pen down their knowledge, pen down their experiences. This was the second phase. Probably it didn't diminish the importance of teacher, but the learners or the students, they had some alternative sources to learn. Teachers plus the books. And then came the present era, the flood or the flow of knowledge. You have internet, you have so many online resources available, but this doesn't mean it diminishes. Of course, to update yourselves about the subject matter, yes, you have many sources. But I would again like to reiterate, re-emphasize, it has not diminished the importance of teacher. Just if we take the present era, the turbulence in which our 
scholars, our students are living. The flow of knowledge is to the extent that there is a turbulence in this our academic or intellectual world. Virtually, there is a turbulence. So here, the role of teacher, we have to see from a different perspective. What's the role of teacher? Role of the teacher is probably to ask the relevant questions in the classroom. Once we ask those relevant questions in the classroom, then and only then, that may guide the student to pick up. Hire Jawaharat ke sumandar mein se, usko sirfu chun chun kar wo hire uthayega, which will garnish his personality or her personality. And above all, subject matter is different thing. We study journals, we go to uh, libraries, we get upgraded from the internet and so many other sources of knowledge. But then there are about which our seminar is going to revolve today, deliberations are going to take place, human values. Probably books and journals may not help you. It's only your personal interaction with the teacher where you will get upgraded. It's only interaction with the teacher which will bring humility and modesty in us. If humility and modesty, we are, if we are not in a position to imbibe these features, inculcate these features into our personality, be sure that whole of our education, we should feel that, no, it's not complete. Our education is not complete. If we don't come to them, our whole system is a failure, I should say. These are not these things you won't get from the books and journals. It is only through interaction with the teachers. And just for information of my students who are here, a sensitive teacher, bhale wo aapke saath classroom mein interact na bhi kare, uska corridor mein chalna hi, uska department mein enter hona hi, humare liye bohut bai saadat ho. I quote Dalai Lama, who observed that today in the struggle for survival, there is a struggle of survival going on across the society. In their struggle for survival, people use education. Today, education is the main vehicle of survival. However, since the methods employed for educating youth are wrong, Education could not guarantee the survival of large number of people. This is so, particularly in the urban areas. And due to wrong methods of imparting education, the youth has failed to draw benefit from their education for survival, especially in urban areas. Hence, they have reported, they have resorted to crime for their survival and unlawful activities, of course. A large number of them are also engaged in uh, petty uh, uh, economic activities, not resorting to crime, but the crime rate is going up. He argues that human values are necessary in, our, in order to lead a harmonious life. And this is true for both groups and individuals. These human values still act as foundation of education and that no education can succeed without these human values being a part and parcel of context, content, and process of education and professional practices of the educators, of the teachers. We know our educational initiatives and its investments, quite evident, would bear the desired results in terms of distinct change in the lives of masses if we are successful in inculcating among the future citizens assigned to us desired values and qualities of character. Otherwise, we may grow materially, as mentioned earlier also, as a nation. And no doubt, we have been doing so for several decades now. Materially, we have developed a great deal, but without much peace and happiness in our lives. And this will be true for individual families as well. Material growth and its just distribution among citizens depends 
on ethical practices followed by people engaged in the production and distribution of wealth and the political governance of society, as also those occupied in other walks of life. These ethical practices, in turn, depend on the value-based grooming of the citizens while they undergo the process of acquiring knowledge and skills in educational institutions. The task becomes all the more challenging in view of the implications of heavy incursions of information and communication technologies into our lives and in the education systems, as was mentioned earlier also. Values are individual beliefs that motivate people to act one way or another. Schwartz, who has done seminal work in human values and categorization of human values, calls values as motivational goals, which refer to desirable end states. Values follow patterns of behavior. Human values are the virtues that guide us to take into account human element when one interacts with other human beings. They are our feelings for human essence of others. It is both what we expect others to do to us and what we aim to give to other human beings. Human values are a set of consistent measures and behaviors that people choose to follow consciously and practice as they strive to do what is right or what society expects them to do while playing their roles, different roles in the society. Examples of human values may include respect, acceptance, consideration, appreciation, listening, openness, affection, empathy, and love towards other human beings. It is with these human values that one becomes truly able to put into practice his ethical values such as justice, integrity, refusal to violence, etc. Schwartz proposed 10 basic human values which differ in their underlying motivational base. So some human values motivate more, some less, some in one particular direction, some in other direction. Benevolence, universalism, conformity, security, tradition, power achievement, hedonism, pleasure, stimulation, and self-direction. One of the two major dimensions of Schwartz's model of human values is self-enhancement, self-promotion, self-achievement self-transcendence, social focus. In the first, it is focus of the self. In the other, it is the focus of the society, focus of the others. Self-enhancement mainly consists of the values of achievement and power. You want to gain achievement, you want to gain power, as well as some part of hedonism. You want to have some pleasure as well. People valuing self-enhancement believe that, for example, Success as well as showing competence in, is important in life. Yes, it is. And they are not wrong, perhaps, in that. But at what cost? On the other hand, on the other end, lie self-transcendence values, namely benevolence, universalism. People who value self-transcendence believe that, for example, Equality and caring for others are more important. They consider others. We give a team number of examples where teachers have followed this particular dimension of the values and have made, uh, brought tremendous changes in the life of their students, especially at the school level. Societal consciousness is the consciousness, consciousness shared by individuals within a society. So here, it would mean that consciousness about human values is to be shared by the people, which would happen by following a systematic process of their grooming. Lama argues that this process of development 
of human values begins much before the teacher comes into the life of a child at the hands of his or her mother who initiates the child into set of human values of love, care, and respect. However, more planned and faster grooming of children in values as also in other aspects of learning and development takes place in formal education setting. And therefore, formal and vibrant, it's not just formal, formal and vibrant setting is important for value development. In Vygotsky's view, a very famous sociologist, for attaining better results of educational processes and value development, we should respect the zone of proximal development of the child, whereby we should distinguish between what tasks children can do at their own without our interference and support, and what need teachers help. He insisted that helping children on tasks they can do at their own or by helping them, by not helping them enough on difficult tasks would impede their development, would impede their cognitive development, their thinking development. The decision where exactly teachers should intervene and guide learners in their learning tasks, this is true at the higher levels also, relates to pedagogy. Paulo Freire, yet another important sociologist, <coughs> proposes that the teacher should enter into a learning experience along with the students. So all the time he has to be there with the students. So he is not sometimes uh, just uh, onlooker, his watcher is looking at the activities of the students from a distance. He is playing different roles, but he has to be there in the learning experience along with the students all the time. His pedagogic proposition, Paulo Freire's, as presented in his famous book, Pedagogy of Oppressed, is built on belief on the belief that teachers can provide a productive learning environment. This is being talked about in the education policy also, productive learning environment, only when they understand the social, political, and psychological contexts of a student's lives. Living by human values of empathy, listening, love, and consideration would help educators in developing this understanding about the students. And uh, in entering into learning experience with them and organizing positive learning environment that inspires and motivates the students for their active engagement in the task of learning. So this kind of understanding we have been talking about background, but what kind of background? Sensitivity about their background is a must for engaging with the students. Vygotsky also believed that proper language development of students, which is the main vehicle of interaction with them, would greatly help children internalize values. So if language development is defective, is half-baked, then internalization of your values will be difficult for children, as well as internalization of other learnings as well. You know that World Bank report on education 2018 and many other, like Pratham, etc., have pointed out that language learning of our people, our children in primary schools, is abysmally poor, unsatisfactory. They say that students of standard three cannot write even a single word. So if the language development is defective, then later on, perhaps, value development also will be defective besides other education developments. Keeping in view the contemporary problems of Indian society and the challenges that it faces today, the National Education Policy 2020 declared that the purpose of the education system in India is to develop good human beings, capable of rational thought and action, possessing compassion and empathy, courage and resilience, scientific temper and creative imagination, with sound ethical moorings and values. 
It aims at producing engaged, productive, and contributing citizens for building an equitable, inclusive, and plural, plural society as envisaged in our constitution. Definitely, uh, our first teachers are our parents, definitely. So, uh, this day is dedicated to our parents also, who right from our uh, infancy groom us and Dr. Akhtasa was talking about human values and the type of values they inculcate in us from infancy itself and we keep on growing, go to school at school. We have different set of teachers, you know, uh, we may be impressed by some teachers and uh, we have that fear of some teachers who are very strict with us, but every teacher has or uh, have their own uh, way of uh, teaching and own way of uh, disciplining. And at high school, secondary level, as adolescents, uh, we have different mindset and uh, we know as teachers how uh, differently we have to groom our uh, adolescent uh, students uh, and uh, inculcate human values in them and train them. Then we go to at college and university level completely a different set of feeling, a different uh, infrastructure. We interact uh, with different teachers. Uh, so when we uh, take our life like, right from our uh, you know, infancy, from uh, home, uh, school, college, and then uh, university, uh, just see the journey with how many teachers we interact. We've been students ourselves, still we are students, we keep on learning every day. Uh, and definitely in this journey there are some teachers which really influence your mind and heart and uh, you become connected with them. Uh, I'm sure we all have mentors. I have my own mentors. I am in touch with them even uh, right now. Just advise my students and research scholars. Uh, everyone has been a mentee and uh, everyone has a mentor. Mentor can be even, a father can be mentor, a mother can be mentor, a teacher can be mentor, or a friend can be mentor. But we do have mentors on whom uh, sometimes we rely on any type of uh, advice. Uh, as a teacher, uh, I must say, uh, teachers always face challenges. Uh, you see that in uh, every profession, teachers are there, whether here uh, in university, uh, in medical profession, in engineering profession, teachers are there. So I must say that uh, teachers uh, play their role in every sector and there would not be uh, any, uh, you know, uh, in any sector, we would not have stalwarts in any sector unless the teachers were there. Even the big scientists, reputed scientists, they have their mentors and they have been trained by the teachers. I congratulate you and as I always say, I, uh, I become very happy when I see more girls uh, in any department. I can see uh, more girls over there. I wish them all the best.